Mr. Chairman, fellow panelists, ladies and gentlemen, I must confess to a bit of stage fright uh, speaking immediately after the Ombudsman. <laughs> she is the face of the fight against corruption, and she is the face of efficiency and effectiveness in doing so. I don't think there are too many Filipinos who can claim a record similar to hers. And we are here to thank her for all of the good work she has done for the country. <laughs> Justice Morales. <clears throat> I speak from a slightly different perspective because I believe that anti-corruption is a fight that has to be waged on all fronts. And I happen to believe that the other side of anti-corruption is the fight for good governance, not only in the public sector, but in the private sector as well. And thus, we have been doing a corporate governance advocacy, promoting good governance in the private sector. And I'm very pleased that uh, the chair of our Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, Tess, are you there somewhere? Can we acknowledge you? Uh, chair Bosa is here. She too has been leading the fight for good governance among our publicly listed corporations and then moving on from there. I must confess that uh, as we speak, the G20 leaders had just adopted the G20 corporate governance principles that were worked on by OECD. Even before the G20 leaders adopted the G20 OECD principles of co corporate governance, we in the Philippines, under the leadership of Tessar Bosa, already adopted those corporate governance principles. So we're, I think, the very first country to do so. Now, we have not only adopted principles, we have also adopted very specific guidelines on how those principles are going to be observed. And that's why the Philippines, under the leadership of our SEC, became part of the ASEAN Corporate Governance Scorecard Initiative. And I'm very pleased to let you know that after three years or four years of working on this initiative, we finally came out with an agreed questionnaire against which all publicly listed corporations in ASEAN are going to be rated. And last Saturday, ASEAN released the first results of that ranking. And I'm very happy to note that we have 50 publicly listed corporations in ASEAN that really are competitive and very much in line with global standards. And 11 of those 50 are Philippine corporations. And I'm very glad to let you know that we came second to Thailand in terms of number of publicly listed companies ranked among the top 50. We beat Singapore and Malaysia. This must be a surprise to the Philippines. Now, in case you are thinking that we are limiting our attention to publicly listed companies, in a corporate governance blueprint that SEC released last Saturday, there's already a reference to simply making the publicly listed corporations as the benchmarks for good corporate governance practices. And as benchmarks, they have to be therefore adapted to the different sectors of our corporate world. First, of course, would be the universal and commercial banks. I'm very pleased to let you know that our central bank is working very closely with us on having an adopted corporate governance principles and guidelines for our banks and will be issuing scorecards as well. We're working actively with our insurance, company, insurance commission so that all insurance corporations will also have a corporate governance compliance scorecard. Not only that, we also have a corporate governance scorecard for our state-owned enterprises. 
And we're very happy to inform this audience that in 2011, we're able to pass a law on the corporate governance of our state-owned enterprises, which sets a standard for all state-owned enterprises in the world. And we're making significant progress to clean up that sector. Now, all of these are compliance initiatives. Is that all that there is in governance? The answer obviously is no. You've got to worry about performance. Corporate governance is not about box ticking. It is about delivering good business results very much in line with sustainability principles. The principles of ethics and integrity, and looking at Monde Rosario, who will be speaking after me, the principles of solidarity, and above all of social responsibility. All these have to be put together, and in fact vetted and checked, so that corporations are not simply issuing financial statements on a quarterly basis. In the Philippines, we're beginning to get them to issue semestral reports based on non-financial elements as well. For example, the learning and growth of the people working in the enterprise. The competitiveness and efficiency of the core process of the enterprise. The manner in which constituencies and customers are being served. Financial results and above all, socio-economic impact. And beyond all of these, of course, we're certifying corporations on the basis of integrity, solidarity, and social responsibility. All these are big words. The question to ask is, are we actually doing this? And I'm very pleased to let you know that we're doing this not only in the private sector. We're actually already doing it in the public sector. We're doing public governance advocacy as well. And we require those local government units and national government agencies who go into a governance program and transformation program effectively to do three things. First, they must have a shared vision, which is articulated. And on the basis of that shared vision, we ask them to come out with a transformation roadmap, which sets out the strategic priorities that the institution must pursue over a period of three years, five years, and seven years, part of which is not only good governance, but actually integrity. And based on the transformation roadmap, they come out every six months with accomplishment reports relative to the targets that have been set in the transformation roadmap. So there is transparency, there's accountability, there is public reporting, there's a multi-sector governance coalition that vets and checks whether in fact the performance claims are real, genuine, and are certified not only by Deloitte, but also by other external auditors. Are we talking about all of these things as mere ideas? No. We actually have faces of local government units and national government agencies that have gone through the transformation journey. And we're distributing their stories uh, to each one of you. But let me cite five local government units that have made it and we have branded them as islands of good governance. First is in this island of Luzon. You have a city which is called Balanga. Fantastic. As a matter of fact, last Friday, when we launched our uh, islands of good governance, the mayor could not be here because he was in Singapore receiving an award in good governance. We have two in the Visayas, in Mandawe, and in Negros Occidental, is it Italize, and the island of Mindanao. There are actual good cities there. The city of Butuan and the city of Dipolo. It's amazing what the cities are able to do. Are we concentrating only on cities? No. We're working with national government agencies as well. We have the Philippine Heart Center under our Department of Health. You have the Department of Trade and Industry as a whole that is already an island of good governance. And under our def uh, Department of National Defense, we have the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Philippine Army, and the Philippine Navy. And as we speak, in about five days' time, 
you will have one local government unit of the Philippines receiving a Hall of Fame award in Boston under the auspices of the Harvard Collaborative, which is called Palladium, and that is the city of San Fernando in La Union. World class public governance. And this is all Philippine. Balanced scorecard adapted into Philippine conditions. Have we limited ourselves to local government units, national government agencies? No. We also have, from our GOCC or SOE sector, the National Electrification Administration, and of course, the Central Bank of the Philippines. Now, in all of these, there are dedicated staff that actually work and make sure that the entire system of balanced scorecard, performance, transformation roadmaps are done. I have two representatives here who are actually doing that. The representative from the Philippine Navy, uh, Captain Angeles, could you please stand? <laughs> the Philippine Navy. And we have from our National Electrification Administration, Francisco Caimo. <laughs> Great guys. You might want to know as a result of the good governance program in our National Electrification Administration, they're on the way before this administration bows out. Electrification in all the small communities of the Philippines throughout the islands. This has been very difficult, but it is done. Now, let me end by saying this is just the beginning. We have shown that good governance anti-corruption can work in the Philippines, in local government units, national government agencies, GOCCs or SOEs, and our regulatory sector. Is that the end? No. What we need to do is to scale up, share our experience, and learn from the rest of APEC. And as I said last Friday, we now have islands of good governance. Our ambition is to become an archipelago of good governance. Thank you and good morning.